Keisha Telly, the Mixology Diva, here this evening, Thursday, Thursday, Thirsty Thursday, to help you create some fun cocktails and learn some of the basics of bartending. So I always like a good themed cocktail. I don't know if everyone on the live video knows that I am from Salem. I grew up there, so technically I'm a witch. Um, I love Halloween. Um, I have a couple of drinks tonight. One is just, you know, an autumn themed drink. It is a rosemary maple bourbon sour. And the other one is a black cherry Cosmo. It is actually black. Um, so why don't we start with the um, more classic one. Now we've been talking about, this is the third week and we're reviewing some stuff about how to make um, drinks properly. So tonight we're gonna make um, the bourbon sour with bourbon. We talked about bourbon being a whiskey that has 51% corn. It's a little sweeter than blended whiskeys or rye whiskeys. So we also talked about two different shakers. This is a classic um, Boston shaker. And I bet a lot of you at home have the cobbler shaker with the strainer built in. So we're gonna start with the bourbon sour. And do you remember I said, I think these little measuring cups are so much easier to use than um, jiggers. So let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna use my Boston shaker. We're going to do um, two ounces of the bourbon. Okay, pour that right in. Um, it would help if I had the rosemary out. <laughs> All righty. Um, some of you, the reason why I chose this drink is um, a lot of us are still um, growing rosemary. It's the only herb that we can um, sort of still get going in the garden. So I cut a nice little sprig and we're going to, you don't have to kill herbs. I've, I went at bars and I watch the bartenders like pummel, 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 pummel. You know what, these are plants. You just have to slap it, don't lose it. Get it in the glass. And now we're gonna use our maple syrup. Most bartenders do not use anything straight with the syrup, so um, we usually dilute it, whether it's honey, sugar, or water, uh, sh honey, sugar, agave, or maple syrup, we dilute it with a little water. Now, I've mentioned before that I don't like super sweet drinks, so I'm only gonna do a half ounce of the honey, of uh, maple syrup. Oh my God, Maureen. Get it together. And I put a half ounce of hot water. I didn't use boiling water, just hot water. So now it's a nice, um, it's not too viscous. And we're gonna put that right in. Okay, we talked about using fresh citrus. So, you know, I hope you have lemons and limes on hand. I just cut off those little nipply ends, cut them in half. And this is the contraption I like. Get rid of the lime. <laughs> I was testing drinks earlier. Um, lemon in there. If you um, want to put it first in a bigger vessel, get all that fresh juice out. And we want one ounce of the fresh lemon juice. So let's see where we're at. I bet it's one whole lemon. Yep, that's about right. One lemon, nice size lemon. By the way, a little trick to know, when you're choosing your lemons, the thicker the skin, the less juice. The thinner the skin, more juice. Okay, one ounce of lemon juice. Now, for those of you who like your drinks a little on the sweeter side, bump up 
your maple syrup. So I did a half ounce of maple syrup, a half ounce of hot water, but maybe you do three quarters of an ounce of maple syrup and three quarters and a half, just a little over half of the hot water. Okay, I've been saying every week, please use clean ice, which means you have to check your filter on your freezer. You really should have cocktail ice. Now I'm gonna use the Boston Shaker ice the pint glass and we're going to use the metal so in order to shake this properly you're going to tap it on the top and you're going to shake so um a lot of people don't know this but you don't shake any drinks like manhattans or martinis those are really supposed to be stirred vigorously stirred but not shaken this has a mixer in it, the lemon juice and the maple syrup. So in this case, you do shake it. To release the Boston Shaker, there's a wide, thick opening, there's a medium opening, and there's no opening. You tap it at the medium opening to release, okay? So now, we would normally put a drink like this in um, a double O fashion, I went and got one of my vintage glasses, which is about the size of an old fashioned, we'll call that an old fashioned. Um, I always like to keep and use the dirty ice, I don't use fresh ice. But I am going to add a little more ice, and what you can do with that rosemary sprig is use it as a garnish. And I did have a little stir, I have too many things on my bar. Oh, here it is. I have these vintage glass stirs, straws. So isn't that a pretty drink? Let me see how it tastes for you. Mm. That is good. All right, drink one. Now we're down to drink two. Always wash your um, barware between drinks. So give me one second while I do that. Clean the shakers. The so one to drink two. Alright. Now, in order to make the black Cosmo, cherry Cosmo, I'm gonna warn you. It's a little bit messy. So I have done this a number of years in a row. And what we're going to do is we're going to dye some vodka black. Um, I shouldn't have got my hand for it. Uh, so where I get the black food coloring, a lot of you people who are crafters will probably um, recognize it's um, from, I think, Michael's craft store. Um, it's in the cake decorating aisle. It's called Wilton um, Food Dye. So we're gonna, you know, I'm just gonna pour enough for one drink. You might be making drinks for you, a friend, a spouse, family. So you might go ahead and <laughs> dye a half a bottle of vodka. It does not change the flavor of the vodka. Okay. So, I can't remember if my spoon fits in. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, my right, rosemary. So, let me see. How did I used to get this out? I think I used a straw. Um, there we go. I'm going to need next year to order some more. First, when you put stuff in, it just... Um, you know, it's turning like blue, but the more you put in, the darker. Okay. Can you guys see that? Look at my black vodka. <laughs> I, I know it's hard when I have it on a black cloth. All right. Wilton Black 
food coloring um, in the cake decorating aisle. And it looks like that. Okay? Um, all right, so I can do the other thing while you're there, and this can be really fun. All right, one glove gone. Both gloves gone. Is to get also this pearl dust, which we'll put in the drink at the end, okay? Uh, so we'll get our shaker ready, and we're going to do, I think I can get rid of this straw, and this thing. Yeah, now be very careful of this stuff because it's black food coloring. All right, washing hands. So we're gonna go back. So Cosmo is normally citrus vodka, Cointreau, or triple sack, fresh lime juice, and um, a couple of splashes of cranberry juice. But in this case, we're going to do, I need my clear one. We're gonna do one and a half ounces of the black vodka. Okay, that looks so cool, doesn't it? We're going to do a half ounce. You can either use triple sec or Cointreau. Um, it's up to you in a mixed drink. I really don't think it matters. We did a half ounce of the orange liqueur, whatever your choice is. Now, this drink doesn't get lemon, it gets lime. So once again, I'm going to say quarter ounce is a um, half of a lime. I bet I'm right. Despite my best efforts, I still have black dye in my hand. Okay, and I picked up at Trader Joe's dark cherry juice. <laughs> no, the, the black dye shouldn't turn your lips black, please. Um, tart cherry juice. I couldn't find the tart cherry juice, only this one, but it is 100% cherry juice. We're going to measure one ounce. So this juice is already pretty dark. I don't know if you can see that. So there we go. All right, fresh ice. So you can see it. So I'm going to go with the clear instead of this sort of amber cocktail glass. All right. We're going to use our strainer. We'll call this the Hawthorne strainer. Remember, we also have the julep strainer, but this is really for like Manhattans and martinis. Okay. I think to really make this ta-da. I need this black thing to go away. So we've got our coop. Oh my goodness. Okay. Now, let's get our little pearl dust. One ounce, one ounce of the dark cherry juice. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking of printing up a, a, an easy ebook with all the drink recipes that I go over with. So we have our, our pearl dust. Okay. All right. I don't know if 
if you can see that. Black. Let me try that for you. And if you're worried about, <laughs> I don't think you get black loops. You could use a sip straw. Mm. Yummy. Oh, it's really good. It's it's not super sweet because it's made with the cherry juice and um, the fresh lime juice. So you're going to hear me say again and again and again, the more fresh ingredients you use, so don't go get, you know, flavored this or flavored that. Use the real McCoy, okay? Real cherry juice, real citrus, real herbs. Um, all right, I have one more little fun thing. So, <laughs> I'm such a nerd, I love this kind of goofy stuff. I have um, these eyeball, they actually glow, but we're not gonna be able to see the glow. But you should be able to see, if you turn down the line, you can pop those little ice cubes in your drink. And that would be fun. So we have the Rosemary Maple Bourbon Sour. We're going to try that again for you. Mm -mm -mm. That is really good. It's um, citrusy. Now, I want to tell all of you people who are like, oh, I don't drink whiskeys. Those are like weird, you know, they've got color. Really try, bourbon is a great introduction. Um, it's a little bit of a sweeter whiskey because of what? Anybody, shout it out. What makes bourbon corn? Somebody must have said it. <laughs> it has to have 51% corn and it has to be from Kentucky. Okay, so having a drink like this, my goodness, fresh lemon, maple, rosemary, and there's no way you're not gonna like this. So there it is with the eyeball, but if it were dark, it'd even um, look better. Um, by the way, a few of you have reached out to me and thank you, thank you so much. Um, some of you want to <laughs> send a gratuity, much appreciated. And um, yes, my Venmo is at Maureen Dash Nuchatelli. One of my sisters will spell it for you. Yes, it's the long Italian last name. And I wish you could see this, but it's black with all this iridescent pearl dust. And I'll try this again for you too, just to make sure. Mm. Mm. I think you would like this. I really do. Um, so now, of course, I'm going to have to consume all this because I have <laughs> leftover black vodka. So I hope everyone knows you can, um, I don't know if they have it in stock, but call them first. This is at Craft Store, Wilton's Cake Decorating Black Food Dye Pearl Dust. And I bought this, I'm sure all of you, if you went in your, you know, baking cupboard, your, you know, food coloring kit is from five years ago. I bought this three years ago, um, so I still have it. The other thing I've pointed out before is these squeezy bottles are really great to use. Say you're making a whole bunch of fresh drinks and, you know, you don't want to like sit there and painstakingly slow down and squeeze each citrus to order. You can squeeze up a bunch of juice to begin with. I use these squeezy bottles and I love this labeling system that I got from the container store called Label Once. You put a label, one is a pen and one is a racer. And I have them on some of my Pyrex on you know these squeezy bottles because I um, used to do private parties this one you know is gone through the dishwasher the label never comes off you just erase it and label and date any syrups you make any juices any concoctions and the system could also oh thank you Marion um, can also be used for your food. So I think a lot of you know that I'm a professional organizer and I try to help people be organized 
even in their refrigerator. So I always tell people on trash night, go through the fridge and throw it out. But so often people would say to me, I don't know how old that is. Well, if you have your Pyrex dishes, of course the one that I pull out doesn't have a label. If you had all your Pyrex with that labeling, you could put the whatever it is and the date on it and also in the freezer. I really hope you guys, um, I'm trying to look at questions. <laughs> you love the eyeball and the drink. I was thinking of you, Lise, when I got those. Um, me, I, you might have even gotten them for me. I don't know, I can't remember. Very fun. Um, I do miss being behind the bar. You know, people knew wherever I worked, I was such a nerd at any holiday. Like I, at Halloween, I would load up the bar with candy. I'd bring in the goofy eyeballs. I'd always make that black Cosmo. I'd do all sorts of fun, goofy things. And um, we had a blast at every holiday. I need no excuse to celebrate. I love it all. I even, you know, got out my silly bar towels and I decorated my mantle. I hope you guys, um, you know, post questions, post um, suggestions, post queries, because then I know what to do for next week. And um, we're going to continue with some fall themed drinks. And then, of course, when we get to the holidays, look out. I hope these have been helpful learning the correct barware, how to measure, what to do, how to think about things. Um, and next week, I don't know what I'm going to come up with next, but if you have some like weird <laughs> liquors and liquors, hey, what do I do with that? You know, post right now and I'll try to come up with um, a drink. Meanwhile, I'm hoping, all right, I told you I was a witch, so you're not going to be surprised when I do this. I think at least you'll remember this hot. All right, I hope I can do this correctly. All right. So where's my silly drink? And I just want to say all, to all of you, I know um, things are a little different these days, but I try to <laughs> maintain any continuity that I can. So I just want to say happy Halloween to all of you. Here's looking at you. And I hope you have a rocking good night. And I hope you come up with some fun cocktails. Maybe one of these that I made tonight. Okay. Happy Halloween, everybody. See you next week. Cheers.